I'm Doug Richardson, and this is Photography the Way I See It. <laughs> Hey YouTube, welcome back. I'm Doug Richardson and this is another episode of Photography the Way I See It. Today we're going to be talking about photographing fireworks. <laughs> okay, um, I'm asked this question a lot too, photographing uh, fireworks, photographing uh, <clears throat> lightning photographing night scenes it, it is a different it is a different animal and uh, takes a little bit of practice and it, it's actually fun and it's easier nowadays to, to see that it was back in the day you didn't know what you was getting you had to wait till you got the film developed now if you're a little off here or there uh, you just look, look on the back of the camera and see what you're getting if you need to make an adjustment go ahead and make the adjustment okay a um, couple things to start with here, um, you want to use a tripod. If you're doing nighttime photography, like night scenes, uh, lightning, photo uh, uh, fireworks, you have to use a tripod. If you think you're gonna wait on a lightning bolt and take the picture, if anybody ever said they did it that way, they're either lying or they got extremely lucky. Okay, it, it just, it doesn't work that way. You need to have a tripod, okay, at first. That's the first thing you need. You're also going to need a shutter release. We talked about that bulb setting before, the B on the camera. You're going to be locking that shutter open for periods of time. Could be five seconds, could be 30 seconds, however long. If you have a shutter release, that allows you to open the shutter and then let the shutter release kind of hang down to the side of the camera while your shutter is locked open. Then you're waiting for things to happen. Okay, so I would recommend you get a shutter release. Okay, now here's something um, that you really got to understand how this kind of photography works. You are not photographing the darkness. You are photographing the light. Okay, so you look at it and you're like, well, it's dark. I need a high ISO. Well, you're, number one, you're photographing a light source. Those little balls of fire that are in a firework when it explodes, they're going to be streaking your sensor. Okay, you're not gonna capture an image. You're gonna allow it to create itself. Okay, so being that it in itself is light, for fireworks and this type of photography, you wanna use a lower ISO. Okay, now, when I used to do this a lot, I used 64. I'm not talking about 64,000 or 6,400. I'm talking about 64, okay, or 100 ISO, okay. You want that ISO to be low. If you put the ISO too high, then when the firework explodes, it can burn right into your sensor, not, not into your sensor that it's going to hurt your sensor, but into your photograph. It'll burn itself right out and everything will be white. You want, you want detail, okay, and you want colors, and you're not going to get that with a high ISO, okay. So you want to choose a high ISO and a small f-stop, big number, small f-stop, 11, 16, 8, try, you, might, you might have to experiment a little bit. I've gotten different results with different ones, but I think 11 is a good place to start, okay. So low ISO, 100 if, you, if your camera goes down that far, or 200 even. But at 200, I'd keep that f-stop down around 11 at least. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to let the fireworks start. As the fireworks... Okay. As the fireworks start, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be focusing your camera. You can do it automatically if it will focus on it quick enough automatically, or you can do it manually, flip the lens on the manual, and see what you get. But once you get the focus where you want it, turn off the autofocus, go to manual, and don't touch the lens. Okay, just, just leave it right there. Okay, so we got the low ISO, the, the, the small f-stop, turning on the autofocus, and this is important, a lot of people don't understand this, 
if you look on the lens, there's footage, and it's like, okay, if they're 10 feet away, okay, that's about, you know, where the focus is. And a lot of people, I've heard of people doing, actually saw one guy do this. He figured, well, the fireworks are 1,000 feet or 500 feet, or however high they are in the air, and my lens only focuses up to 100 feet and everything else is infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lens on infinity and I should have it. Well, these lenses are built with a little bit of give in them for different types of weather, different types of, you know, different things that, that can affect the lens. And there's like contraction and expansion. It's microscopic. You don't see it, but it can happen. You can actually focus farther than infinity. So you don't want to put your lens on infinity. If it works, you got lucky. Okay, but you can actually focus farther than infinity. That's not a good idea. You want to actually look through, you know, you've got your camera on a tripod, it's, it's aimed up in the air or aimed to where, if you might be on a hillside shooting down in, however you're, however you're doing it. And uh, you want to do it that way and you want to make sure that you're in focus, it's staying there, and you're ready for the bursts. Once you get it in focus, see where they're going to be. You don't want to get too tight because then you're not maybe not getting it all. So once you get it framed where you want it to be, now you're ready. So now they're starting to fire off more fireworks. Now what you want to do is hit the bulb, lock the shutter open, and just start watching. A firework will go up and explode. You are not capturing the explosion. You're capturing the whole thing. You're going to get the rocket going up into the air. You'll have a wee little streak in your picture. And when it explodes, every little ball of fire that comes out of that firework is going to streak your sensor. And that's where, the, that's where you get your photograph. All right? Now, after it explodes, you have a choice. You can release the shutter um, release so that, the, so that the lens or everything closes down and moves on to the next picture. Or you can wait for more and have multiple fireworks. I'm, I'm putting some samples up here, too. You'll see uh, one of the photos has multiple bursts. Well, they both have multiple bursts, but one has more than the other. And I shot those a few years back. Um, but it's up to you whether you're going to do one at a time or you're going to do multiples and make it look like a grand finale, even though it's at the beginning. It's, it's however you want to do it you're creating. It's, it's your own artwork. Okay? However you want to do it. Now, here's what I suggest. That bulb, and make sure you've got a good battery to start. You don't want to do this on a battery. It's almost dead because that battery is operating when that shutter is open. Okay. So what you want to do is when, if you're going to leave that shutter open for multiple bursts, in between, have a car, piece of cardboard or something, something dark, as dark as you can get it with you. Set it over top of your lens because you've got that bulb, you've got that shutter open. You don't want stray light going in there or, you know, you just, you just never, if somebody else would take a picture and there's something in your frame that their flash hits, that's going to record on your picture. You don't want that. All right. So just put that cardboard over top of the lens. Your bulb is still open. When they fire the next one, move the cardboard. Wait till it explodes. Put the cardboard back over there. Now, this is all if you're recording on the same image. Otherwise, go ahead and let that next one go. Reach down there. Undo it so that undo the shutter release so the ball so the shutter closes. Now you're on the next picture and you just repeat until you're you're done. That's how you photograph fireworks. Don't wait for it to explode and stand there and take a picture of it or use a tripod and take a picture of it. Shutter speeds do not work when photographing fireworks. I've never seen them work, at least not properly. Okay? But that's how you do it. And then just get it closed, crop later if you have to. But that is the secret to taking good firework pictures. If there's a city involved, you got to keep in mind there's more there's more to the image than just dark sky. Now, now you have a city, so now you have to figure out where your exposure is. To maybe it's uh, maybe you can take 15 seconds. Maybe you can do 15 seconds. Lock your shutter open for about 15 seconds while the fireworks are going off, but then close it. Otherwise, the city's going to wash out. Now you have to balance your fireworks with your city. But that's how you photograph fireworks. If you need to rewind, go ahead and rewind. 
but that, that, that's the secret to how it's done. Low ISO is the key there and small f-stop, 11, 16, eights down in, down in that area. I would start with 11, okay? Um, night photos is the same way, even if, if there's no fireworks. If you've seen night photos, if I can dig out a, see my, my thing is a lot of times I have to be careful because I don't know, I, it would easily, be, I would easily be able to find a sample, but I don't want to use somebody else's photo if I don't have to because I don't know, you know, with copyright and stuff like that. So that's why sometimes if I have my own samples, I use them, but if I got to use somebody else's, I, I, uh, I try not to do that. But <clears throat> you're locking the shutter open, even though you may not, it may not be a 20 or 30 second as it is in fireworks sometimes. But if you notice when you look at night photos, especially of a city, it's not often you see cars, you see traffic of any kind. What you see is a streak of red light going one way and a streak of white light going the other. Those are headlights and taillights. The photographer has that shutter locked open and when the cars go by, the lights are streaking the sensor. That's why it's like that because of having to lock that shutter open. That's how you do nighttime photography. That's how you do firework photography. Lightning photography is the same way. The problem with lightning photography is you can't say there's a building there, I'm gonna get a picture of lightning going in behind it. With lightning photography, um, <clears throat> and actually I do have a sample of my own for lightning photography. Photography. I'll put it right over here. Uh, if it's not there now, it'll be there in a second. <clears throat> it was one of those nights where it looked like a light show. The lightning just wouldn't stop. Boom, boom. And it was all in the same general area. It was a piece of cake. It was like duck sitting in a pond for me. Okay. So I had it all set up. I locked my, my uh, shutter open. I think my, I think my, um, I think it was on F11. I'm pretty sure I was. And I just waited for the next thing to go off. Well, suddenly I hear this big boom. As soon as I heard that boom, I put cardboard in front of the lens so I wouldn't get any more. And then I reached down there and I undid the, the shutter and the shutter closed. And this is what I got. And I'll tell you what it looks like to me. And, this, and folks, this is done on film. And it was done, you're looking at the image. There's no Photoshop of any kind. There's no retouching, no cheating of any kind. This is a legit photograph. Doesn't it look like the Lion King on his hind legs standing up and holding that little lion cub out? And if you've watched that movie, he hold... that's what that looks like to me. It looks like the Lion King holding that cub out over all the other animals down below looking up. And this is a legit photo, okay? But that's how you photograph lightning. It is what it is. You're going to have to shoot it where it is and see what happens and again you can do multiple lightning strikes all on one frame or you can move on to the next frame open it back up again and see what you get on the next one okay so let me check double check my notes here um it looks like i got everything so that's good if if you have any questions don't forget like subscribe okay if you have any questions feel free to ask i'll get to them as soon as i can hopefully i get a lot of them and uh, the next episode is going to be, and it's going to be a, it's probably going to be a quick one. It'll be kind of simple, but uh, the next one's going to be which lens should I use? What I'm going to do is just talk a couple of minutes on which lenses I recommend for you to get. There's a lot of them, so uh, uh, I'll go through that. And thanks again for joining me, and we will see you on the next one. Have a great day.